Hey, y'all, come look at this. Why is the Trinity so important? Well, because it's Christian dogma. If you reject the Trinity, you're simply not a Christian. That is not the truth. That's an opinion. Opinion. When someone has a man crush on Geno Jennings, you know it's going to be good. If you're not familiar with Geno Jennings, just look him up. He is a certified heretic and a joke. As I said before, so now I say again. Not believing in the Trinity doesn't mean you're not a Christian. The Bible doesn't tell us not once that if you reject the Trinity, you're not a Christian. This is such a low-tier fallacy, it's hard to take this guy seriously. Not only is this an argument from silence, but it's also what we've come to call in the apologetics world the exact word fallacy, which Muslim da'is are kings of committing, and apparently Unitarian heretics as well. If you believe that God is one person, then you have denied that the Father, Jesus, and the Spirit are distinct. And there is no way you can reconcile that with what is laid out in the scriptures. And this is life eternal, the they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. Jesus is making clear distinction between himself and the father, now concerning the Holy Spirit. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Again, clearly distinct, knowing this and still denying the Trinity puts you outside the bounds of Christianity as professed at Nicaea. Not believing what is clearly stated about the triune God affects your entire belief system and is a salvific issue. Now, salvation is for God to determine alone, but Unitarians of all kinds, as they vary in their beliefs, have crossed that line. Therefore, I will affirm what I said. Denying God is triune makes you a heretic and not a Christian not a Christian. Going through the comments, I often notice people do not have a proper understanding of the Trinity. No one has, to be honest. Understanding of the Trinity. I frequently see comments describing modalism, adoptionism, subordinationism, tritheism, or views that I would consider heterodox. So I will explain the Trinity condensed and somewhat simplified. I'm not going to cite any Bible passages or quote any church fathers as this video would be way too long. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Oh, hold, hold on. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. You're going to teach people about God, but you're not going to use the scriptures? In other words, you're saying, Hi folks, let me tell you who God is in my opinion, cause surely I know when I get to that Bible, no Trinity doctrine is gonna be read there. Don't lie and say it's gonna be too long, brother. Just tell them, I can't find it in the Bible, I'm just gonna go by my opinion and what was passed down to me. It seems Muslims and Unitarians have some things in common. Both are extremely dishonest and love fallacious presuppositions. This is why I lack the patience to engage with laymen who have no formal theological education, especially on TikTok, because we just end up talking past each other as they do not have the knowledge to steal man positions, as you're going to see more of this. And by the way, for the new followers, I do believe Jesus Christ is God. I believe he is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. So anything that makes God God, all that's found in one person, not three persons. Anyways, let's continue. Yeah, none of those confirm any sort of silly Unitarian or oneness doctrine. Isaiah 9, 6 in Hebrew reads Aviad, which simply means the father of everlasting. It's not calling him God the Father. John 10, 36 says, Whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world. Making a distinction, not sure how that supports your position. John 14 is Jesus telling his disciples that he will ask the Father to send another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. I mean, this is hilarious. It's not looking good for you at all. Colossians 2.9 is just another argument from silence on your part. Yes, the Godhead, the Autotos, the absolute fullness of that which makes God God dwells in Jesus. The Autotos is not talking about a singular person, which you just confirmed it's not by defining the Autotos. Yet, you seem to be arguing arguing that it is talking about a singular person, but you don't even seem to understand the Unitarian argument for Colossians 2.9. Cite me any lexicon or any Greek scholar that says Theodotos means the one person of God. The passages you mind, unfortunately, don't support oneness at all. They destroy it passages of quoting the church fathers as this video would be way too long. I just want you guys to have a general understanding of what the Trinity is. Before I continue, I want to quickly refute the dumb objection that the concept of triunity is contradictory and doesn't exist. In mathematics, when we look at the number three, it is one number, yet it consists of three individual numbers. Clear and easy example of triunity. Now let's continue to the Trinity. There is one God, the Father. He is Ase, or self-originated. Derives his divinity from no one but himself. He is unbegotten. And he Notice in the doctrine of the Trinity how the Father is always viewed in a higher position. There's a reason behind that we will get to this in another video. You don't seem to have any understanding of monarchy of the father. The father is the RK or principle without origin. This does not imply superiority in terms of essence. It emphasizes the unique role of the father as the uncaused source. Now notice the second blasphemous belief that they hold to. They believe only the father hold the property of a Sadie, meaning the other two members are not self-sufficient. In simpler terms, they need another divine person to exist. Can you imagine that? 
a God that's not self-sufficient? And bear in mind, the Bible doesn't teach such. Wow, that was a whole straw man and a half. The father being Aroteos does not mean that the son and the Holy Spirit lack self-sufficiency. They share the same divine essence. You keep separating them and describing tritheism. You're attacking a position we don't even hold. And aseity is not an essential attribute for divinity. And the Bible teaches all of this. The famous John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, begotten of whom? The father. John 4, 1426, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Clear distinctions and proceeding from the Father. John 15, 26, which I cited earlier, confirms this as well. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him, monarchy of the Father. John 17, 3, that they might know thee, the only true God, and and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Again, monarchy of the Father, and the Father is clearly Ase, as Jesus is sent by the Father, as he is begotten of the Father, as read in John 3.16 and he eternally generates his word, the Logos, and his spirit. So the Father alone is Arotheos, the RK, cause, monarchy of the Godhead. He, you see, church, this is why Paul spoke these words, being moved by the Holy Ghost, that you should be beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And what does he say after that? He tells us plainly that for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Yeah, I addressed Colossians chapter 2 earlier, and I challenge you to cite me any lexicon or any Greek scholar that says Theodotos means the one person of God. So the Father alone is Arotheos, the Arche, cause, monarchy of the Godhead. Brother, you say the first person of the Trinity is the monarchia of the Godhead. Did the Bible say that? Did Paul say that? It does, as I quoted earlier, and here they are again with some more verses, as you seem to be sola scriptura. Paul teaches that the head of all principalities and power is Christ Jesus. He is not part of a Godhead like you teach the people, but the Godhead is in him. You keep going back to Colossians, as you seem to think this is your greatest proof. So once again, no Greek scholar or lexicon will tell you that Theodotos means the one person of God, which you defined earlier means that which makes God God. You refuted yourself. Please do some studying before responding to me. And by the way, you said the Father generates his spirit? When I say jury generates his spirit, who in the world would think that jury and his spirit are two distinct persons? If the Holy Ghost is the Father's spirit, then the Holy Ghost is not a distinct person from the Father brother. Of course, there's part two and three for this. This is an apples to oranges analogy. You're comparing yourself, a human, to God, which, by the way, I refute later in the video, which you neglect to show. I wonder why. And please do some studying for part two and three, because this was a whole mess of fallacies, lack of understanding, and straw manning. I don't like doing Trinity Oneness videos these days, but when you make it a salvation issue, I just have to respond. I can see why, because the scriptures destroy oneness heresy, and yes, it is a salvific issue as I talked about in the beginning, and this heresy crosses that line. And that is why it bothers you, because your salvation is at stake if you continue to affirm this heresy. Repent and come to the fullness of the truth, which is found in the one triune God. Blessings.